So what infrared spectroscopy tells you, we kind of went over this above, but infrared spectroscopy is used to identify functional groups on a molecule. So let's go through some functional groups and the frequency at which we would see them. Now, so let's start with alkanes. We will start with the carbon to carbon bond. So alkanes, well actually let's, let's talk a little bit about this. Bonds have vibrations in them. Okay, and so we can measure the frequency that they vibrate at. So if we go down to an IR spectra, anytime we have a signal here, that represents a particular bond vibrating at that frequency. Okay? So whenever we see a signal like this one, this one. It looks like we have multiple signals here overlapping each other. Okay, so those signals, all of those signals are telling you about a specific bond that's vibrating. So, carbon to carbon single bonds vibrate at a frequency of about 1200 inverse centimeters. Now, let me just talk about this real quick. The x-axis here is measured in inverse centimeters. So this is called a wave number. Now, wave number is very similar to frequency. It has different units though, okay? So instead of measuring the frequency in hertz, we're measuring the frequency in inverse centimeters. And instead of calling this frequency, we just call it the wave number. And I think that's because this is just the inverse of wavelength, right? Because frequency is the inverse of wavelength. So, so if I talk about frequency or if I talk about wave number, I'm talking about this x-axis here. Now, there's something important that I think you should know from the get-go, which is any um, frequency that is observed around, eh, usually people will say about 1400 or 1500 and lower. So let's go with 11, 12, 13, 14. All right, there's 1400. I like to say anything before 1400 is in what's called the fingerprint region. Okay, this is a region that you're pretty much going to ignore in your entry level organic chemistry classes. Sometimes I'll even say 1500 and, or, um, and smaller, I'll ignore that. Depends how I'm feeling and what kind of information I have. But right around there, so anywhere 14 or lower, I'm just going to ignore that. And so for every IR graph, for example, I can just take a line right at 1400. And even though I have peaks here, those peaks are not going to help me identify functional groups. So I'm just going to ignore them, okay? So that's awesome. You get to just take that out of your graph. Now notice carbon to carbon single bonds vibrate at approximately 1200, uh-oh, vibrate at approximately 1200 inverse centimeters. Now, because that's in our fingerprint region, we actually are pretty much going to ignore carbon to carbon single bonds, okay? Because they're in our fingerprint region. So you don't have to memorize that. However, alkane, um, well, what do I mean here? So let's look at double bonds. What about carbon to carbon double bonds? Where do they, what frequency do, does their bond vibrate at? Well, the answer is approximately 1660 inverse centimeters. So if I came here and saw that I had a peak right around here at 1660, potentially I could have a double bond, carbon to carbon double bond 
in my molecule. All right. Next is a carbon to carbon triple bond. So a carbon to carbon triple bond has a vibrates at a frequency of around 2100, eh, sometimes 2200. We'll stick with 2100. Okay, so right around there. Now, the key here is to notice that we have approximation signs for all of these. And the reason for that is because you're not going to find them exactly at these numbers every time. You know, they may shift to lower inverse centimeters or slightly higher inverse centimeters depending on the molecule and the environment that they're in. But these are a good estimate for where, about where you'd want to be looking for them. Next is the carbon to hydrogen bond. So there's this one, this one, and this one. So if you have a carbon bonded to a hydrogen where the carbon is sp3 hybridized, the frequency that this carbon to hydrogen bond will vibrate at is approximately just under 1300. I'm not 1300. Uh, 3000 inverse centimeters. Okay, so it's just under 3000. Now before I show you an example of that, what's interesting is if you have a carbon bonded to a hydrogen where the carbon is sp2 hybridized. In other words, oops, in other words, that carbon is a part of a double bond, then the carbon to hydrogen bond will vibrate at a frequency just above 3000 inverse centimeters. And since these two are very similar to each other, what I like to do when I see a spectra is I go to 3000 and I just draw a straight line all the way up. If I see that I have peaks in front of or at lower values than 3000, I know, oh, okay, those peaks, those signals are representing a bond between a carbon and a hydrogen where the carbon happens to be sp3 hybridized. In other words, it's just the normal single bonded carbon that's bonded to a hydrogen. And that should be found in almost every single one of the molecules that you would be potentially looking at in spectra, just because they're so common, okay? But if I look one down, if I draw a line at 3000, right? Yes, I still have these peaks right in front of that line. So I know that I have carbon bonded to hydrogen where the carbon happens to be sp3 hybridized, okay? But I also see that I have a signal right after my 3000. So I, that means that's suggesting that I have a carbon to hydrogen bond where my carbon happens to be sp2 hybridized. And since I know that carbons with a double bond are sp2 hybridized, then it's probably a double, you probably have a double bond somewhere in the molecule. Now what's important to realize is that this peak does not directly tell you that you have a double bond because it's not the vibration of the double bond, right? Remember, carbon to carbon double bonds vibrate at approximately 1660. Okay, so we'd be looking at, looking for a peak in that area to tell us that there's a double bond vibrating. But because this carbon to hydrogen bond is, uh, vibrates at a different place depending on the hybridization of this carbon, this suggests that we have a double bond somewhere. So if I see a peak here, the very next thing I'm going to be looking for is my 1660 peak because this suggests that I have a double bond, so I'm going to go look for it, okay? And if you look, so this is 1600 right there. 
if you look, we have a peak. And it's very hard to tell in this whether what exactly this is at. This might be at around 1620, 1630, I don't really know, but it's, it's around 1600 and 1660 is pretty close to 1600. So this is probably our carbon to carbon double bond. All right, what about carbon bonded to a hydrogen where this carbon is sp hybridized. In other words, it's probably triple bonded to another atom. Well, that bond will vibrate at a frequency of approximately 3,300 inverse centimeters, which is right around one, two, which is right here. Okay, so significantly further away, so it would be right around here, okay? So those are pretty easy to point out. All right, let's move on to other more interesting functional groups, like alcohols. Now, let me tell you about alcohol functional groups. Alcohols in the IR spectrum, I think, are the most beautiful peaks you'll see. And that's because they have this parabolic shape. They're not so jaggedy. You see how a lot of these peaks are kind of jaggedy? The OH is usually very smooth. Boom, right there. This is an OH peak. Now, honestly, you don't really have to memorize where the OH peak is because this is the only peak that has such a beautiful parabolic shape. Okay, so the minute that I see that beautiful parabolic shape, I know, oh, that's probably an OH. However, because it is a hydrogen bonded to an oxygen, it will be in a similar area as a hydrogen bonded to a carbon. And that's going to be in the higher frequencies, okay? In fact, that's going to be at approximately 3,300 inverse centimeters, okay? But if I see a nice parabolic, you know, peak over here, automatically, I don't even have to check the specific area, the specific inverse centimeter, I know, oh, that's an OH functional group right there, okay? All right, so we'll stop this video here and we'll continue the second half of the chart in the next video. Thank you.